going on guys it's Cal here from Chaos Saber so this is the unboxing and sort of first expectations video of what to expect when your package arrives obviously some of you have been getting some shipment notifications of the race scavenger clean kits and the Ahsoka hilt kits only being shipped out we did expect to start shipping them in February but we managed to get them out a little bit earlier so that's all good I've had a few common queries that happen when people initially get their packages obviously it's very exciting to get a nice new prop and people immediately start looking at it and inspecting it and checking it over this being such an iconic sort of release from ourselves people are always intrigued by how the mechanism actually works and more details about how they want to know how to take it apart but we were just trying to get the orders out quickly rather than publish all of the guides and instructional information with regards to the installs because we're currently printing the chassis and just trying to fulfill the orders because everyone waited for so long for this to be launched we wanted to make sure we had it launched by the end of the year we're just getting everything wrapped up now so my best advice at the minute is just to wait for the chassis guide to come out the install guide all the information that Cedric and I are going to be releasing. Cedric is the gentleman from Gothry Designs. A lot of these questions will be addressed for when you're doing your install because some people thought that this already had a switch built in, but no, the switch actually comes as part of the chassis. The switch mounts on a part of the chassis that's put inside the hilt. When you first open the box, when it's shipped out to you, you'll have your two pairs of screws. These screws right here, this one is for if you're using the Pro chassis, which would be something like the Master chassis or the Eco chassis. And this is a longer screw that's used to press on a tactile switch. So don't lose this screw. And you've got this small M2 screw, which is just here if you can see. And that screw is what's used to hold the chassis in place. Keep hold of these screws, don't lose them. And then you've got your body plates, of course, which you'll just glue onto the body, which is pretty easy. I'll take those out of the pack just for now. Now the main thing is guys, this assembly has more than 100 screws. And we're talking M1.4, M1, M1.2. These are tiny screws. Now these are obviously coming from factories overseas. And I instructed the factory that when they're doing the assembly to ensure that they wrap the hilts up in some sort of film to avoid any screws becoming loose or falling out of place whilst in transit. As you guys know, boxes bounce up and down, they move along conveyors, there's vibrations. All of these things can affect screws in any way and often screws will just start to be loose. This mechanism has to have some play in order to function, to open smoothly and to close smoothly because it is a mechanical uh, mechanism. It's not driven by any servos, it's not driven by any battery or anything like that. There's no motors driving it, it's just mechanical, you, like, you would just twist it by hand. But obviously when you do your install, you want to minimize as much friction as possible so that it's nicely to just move with your thumb. So we're gonna take the plastic off that is wrapped in and you always, when you're opening the prop for the first time, do it above a flat table so that in case anything was loose in transit, we'll know about it. So I'm opening this one for the first time now on camera. So I'm actually hoping that something is loose. Let's just take a look. Okay. So. I've just got to find where they've been wrapping it. There we go. So we're doing that above a flat top surface just to make sure if anything falls out, it's not going to go anywhere. And we can keep an eye on it. Probably do it above a white piece of paper because all the screws are black. You want to make sure you don't lose anything. So we've got the hilt now, free of all the plastic. Throw that in the bin. And we've got the hilt here, we've got the pommel, which is nicely on there, it's just twist and lock, like so, and aligns properly as it should. So I'm just gonna take the pommel away for now because nothing has come loose here, it's fairly standard, there's some big screws here. And I wanna check the mechanism. So does it open? Yep, opening beautifully and I'm just gonna turn the mechanism out, see if anything's coming out. I'm gonna work the mechanism back and forth just to see if anything falls out. So just working it back and forth, as you can see it's opening and closing as I'm doing that. I'm just opening, closing, opening, closing, just to make sure anything, if anything is loose. So we're pretty good here, nothing's come loose, like I said, this isn't gonna to happen to everyone, it's just a minority of people. And we just wanna make sure that everything's all right. So we're moving it back and forth. 
and no no loose screws or anything like that yeah we're pretty safe then we're going to take a look into the emitter and we're just going to see if we can see anything obvious anything loose all the screws are there nothing has fallen out in transit nothing's become loose in transit all looking pretty good just checking it all very carefully so we've got no loose screws which is great the mechanism is opening and closing nicely as we can see it's all pretty good we're just going to check this small metal pins that are here we just want to make sure none of those are moving out if we if we're turning the saber around we just want to make sure those pins don't fall out that all seems in there nicely now guys if you do find that something is a bit loose all I recommend is something like this this is just Loctite thread locker and all this does really is adds a bit of resistance onto the threads so you apply it onto threads and you can put it on a screw and it will not be permanently attached but it will add some thickness to the threads so that it's less prone to becoming loose from vibrations so this stuff's really good this is just Loctite thread locker there's different brands who sell different thread lockers but this is what I like to use for example if I had a loose screw I would just take the screw out put a small dab of the thread locker on there and screw it back in and let that cure usually it's overnight this won't show on camera but I can feel just bits of resistance not too much like I can't like do it so easily with one finger like as you can see there like, it's not so easy so we've got a bit of resistance being that this is mechanical and I didn't really want the factory applying any grease we can apply it ourselves so I suggest using silicon grease uh, this is a WD-40 spray. I've also got some like actual grease itself, not in a spray can. I'm just a bit of a brand fanboy, so anything that's branded that I recognize, I'll usually just go for that. We're gonna take apart this assembly, this mechanism. You guys can finally see how it works. But just to give a brief rundown, the cog has three screws. Got one, two, three. These screws fasten into nylon rings nylon washers and those washers sit into tracks that are machined into the inner core so when you turn this the nylon washers are less resistant because they're made from nylon and as you twist it they move up the track and they push these small little arms inside here to push up the petals so it's quite a simple mechanism but there's an inner tube here which I'll show you now and undoing these screws frees the mechanism but first what we need to do is we need to take the actual head off the mechanism which are all he everything's held on with these screws up here so you've got one on the body here one here one here one here and another one here and one here so there's four at the top one of them's blade retention as well and there's two on the body so I've got my little iFixit tool kit just here I'm going to get a flathead screwdriver and we're going to start taking apart these screws so I'm going to start with the top ones and remember one of these is one millimeter longer than the other because one of them is blade retention so we've done that now this is being set free right now you're going to notice it might catch and that's because those screws and washers are still in there but you can just work it back and forth it just catches in these gaps because these screws are still protruding so you just turn it like so and then we've got our blade plug which we can take out and we've got this inner core this slot here is designed for the switch track so when the when the switch piece goes in this is the track which that longer screw that I showed you earlier from this bag moves in so the, the longer screw is moving in this track and pushing a switch and then you've also got right there that hole for that M2 screw and that is what will hold that piece so you've got the track for the longer screw which as it rotates that screw is protruding inside and it will hit the switch 
that's how that's designed. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense. But now we've literally just got the mechanism. This is the mechanism here, like so. Now, you'll see what just fell out. Do you see that? That is one of the nylon washers because it's not pressing against this anymore. So it can just fall out. You'll notice if you look in here, there's one of the nylon washers. That's the one that fell out because you can still see the screw. And there's the other nylon washer. So I can put that back. I just need to loosen the screw like so on the cog. Loosen that a little bit. Put the washer back where it needs to be seated. Make sure it's sitting in that channel properly. So it's not sitting properly. I can feel it's not sitting properly. So let's see. Yeah, so it's sitting in there now. I'll line it up with the screw. And we've caught it again. So that washes in the nicely. Now you can see it's moving along those tracks and that's what can cause it to become loose because as it's spinning when this part is in here it stops that nylon washer from coming out if you do it with it off then they're just going to slowly work their way outside of the screw so we've got those screws in there we've got the washers in there let's have a look at what it's like in more detail so if we undo all of these screws like so Do all of them. Let's undo this one. And take our cog off. Our washers will just come out. Now you can sort of see them in there. We can just push them through. So we've got our three washers and our three screws and you can see just with my finger I can actually work that mechanism just pushing it back and forth. All of these screws here, one, two, there's quite a few of them all around but they're here. Once you take those out, this entire piece, this inner piece that's moving up and down, that comes out and you can access all of the, all of the petals everything here the whole thing will just come out I'll just quickly show you actually just to give you an idea might have to get all the screws out and you can see this is the piece that we're talking about see some of the pins that pins come out a little bit push that back in but that is how fragile and delicate this mechanism is so we've got a pin that's come out there so if a pin is coming out like that all I would do is I'd get a bit of that Loctite and I'll put it on that pin but this is how that mechanism works guys and this is where you'll get access to these screws you can see all the screws by the arms there and as you can tell just moving it up and down very delicately like I said guys this isn't something that you'd want to duel with just the amount of screws that are in this section is pretty crazy and the assembly time is so long and just this is something that we wanted to sort of tackle and achieve and offer to you guys who have been so good to us we like to tackle difficult projects and this one was just one that was a was something that I don't think anyone really wanted to tackle it's just really nice to be able to look at this I always admire it when I see it because I just think I've never never thought we would be able to get an actual working prop so it's really nice but this is how you would access these screws and if you did want to get into the finer details of this mechanism that is where you would go so we're going to put this back in now and what I will do as well actually while I've got it I will put a bit of silicon lubricant onto it so I'm just going to lubricate this Just a little bit. I'm going to 
push it back down in here. already a massive improvement on the mechanism there and how it moves up and down nice and smooth doesn't feel nowhere near as much resistance as before just moves just really smoothly up and down and that addition of that silicon lubricant really makes a huge difference in just how it feels Okay, let's put the cog back on. So we want to make sure that everything is aligned properly. And we want to start on this side. You see there's a bit of a gap in the channel there and these holes are lining up. And then we want to match that with the cog. So we'll put the screws in first just to make sure they hold their position. Just check and beautiful mechanisms open in nicely. We'll put a bit of silicon lubricant on this piece when we put it back in. And remember, guys, there is a specific way that these align, so do take note of that. If you have any trouble with getting the alignment right, you'll know because um, when you turn the cog, the petals will only open sort of halfway, which means the track wasn't seated in the start position to then go to its end position. But um, we can help you with those drawings if you are really stuck and can't figure out the alignment from this video. So we're now gonna put the, the head back on and we just align those screw holes. So the, the screw holes that were here, we'll screw that back on. So that's in place. That's in place. Just clean a little bit. But you'll notice now it opens so much more fluid. So if you find that your mechanism is really stiff and you're doing your install, this is something which is important. I don't know if you guys caught on camera then, but that screw just moved. So that's a good opportunity to use the Loctite. So let's see where it came from. It's a small slotted screw. Um, all the petals, screws seem intact. No petal screws missing. So let's open it up. Oh, right there. I can see it already. So the one that just went walkies was this one here. You see it's missing. So I'm going to get my Loctite. I'm going to put some on that screw and I'm going to screw it back in. So I'll use some tweezers just to hold the screw again. Look how tiny that is. <laughs> so I'll put a bit of Loctite on here. And we'll just make a blob like so. And I'll sit it where it needs to go. So I put a bit of Loctite just where it was opening. So that'll get absorbed into the threads. Anything extra I'll just wipe away with my cloth and I'll screw that back in place. Yep. And that is back in there now. It was a bit tricky because I probably didn't have the best screwdriver. I was just kind of using the side of my screwdriver to get it tight. But it's all tight now is back in after falling out we've got a bit of Loctite on there so now it should be really nice and secure and won't fall out again sorry for the lengthy video guys I just thought I would show you as if I was doing it and then we'll put these four screws back on to hold the emitter in place
open up the mechanism because it's so easy now. Blade plug. So which one was the blade retention? That was the one. So hold that. And now we've got this really nice smooth mechanism. We know what to do in terms of opening it, closing it. But that is now moving so beautifully with just one finger. We've covered putting on some Loctite in case there are any issues. And we've now got this smooth mechanism just by adding some silicon lubricant. We've reduced all the risk of any screws becoming loose by just having some thread locker on hand. I'm glad that a screw fell out while I was doing the video because that shows me to then show you how to do it. And we've gone through what these screws are. And of course, these are fairly simple in that you just, oh, <laughs> you just glue them onto here. When you get them, get some glue, put some on, on here, here, on these edges, and just glue them in place. And we've covered what those screws are, which you need to never throw away. Uh, make sure you don't do that. So I'll put this back in the box, but I thought I would show you guys a little bit how the mechanism works. Show you what to do if a screw pops out like it did. Show you what to do if you want to add some more lubricant to make the mechanism operate even smoother. And um, yeah, I would say that if you're going to be planning an install, please wait for the, the Goth 3 Designs install video as that will be covering pretty much everything with regards to the install with some uh, pictures and useful information. So you definitely don't want to miss out on that. And it's just something that is really crucial to the proper workings of the, of the lightsaber if you do want to be uh, putting in electronics. So once again, as always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.